SMT Nation, we back. Nation, Verizon trying to sketch out ways to get its mojo back. 2024, 2024 is shaping up to be a really important year for Verizon. 23, obviously, they've got some positive things that they want to build upon. 22 was a pretty weak year for them. Hopefully, those things are in the rearview mirror and they've learned some things about themselves as a company and where they want to go. And one of the things I want to discuss from this article, I'll be sure to provide it, link will be in the description, is their network approach and why I think it's going to be a pretty solid growth year for the network and how much better it's going to be when the year is completed and all that has been kind of hashed out. All right, so let's discuss the network for Verizon's 2024 year here in this video. Uh, ways to support us can be found in the description along with the link for this article. Okay, so very specifically, I want to look at this component here as highlighted from EVP and President of Global Networks and Technology, Joe Russo. This is the network guy for Verizon. All right, so they got this new like uh, I don't know, reorganization or restructure in which they're looking at making things more regionalized. Verizon is a very big company regionalization when it comes to retail and then now also the network makes a lot of sense for the sake of being able to be more agile and having more control within those segments of those specific regions i really do like this approach uh, it would be no no different than say for example a business you know like uh maybe one that you might possibly work for locally that might have you know one general manager but then also has like couple of assistant managers who do a lot of the day-to-day -day decision making and it just makes a lot of sense right for the sake of efficiency and the fake uh for the sake of being responsive and kind of adaptive right so i really like this approach they got this 18 market structure when it comes to network divisions each one has a leader each one making decisions and prioritizing trying to optimize the needs of those play uh locations so the the quote here from Joe Russo, it's really proven to be an outstanding structure. All right, so he likes what he hears. Uh, so the what that's going to allow them to do, obviously, is I think be more effective. And, and I don't know how to put a monetary number to it, but you know maybe it makes them a 10% better network or a 20% better network overall nationally. But I think within those regions, it makes them a much better network. So as small things need to be handled, they'll be more responsive and ready to take on those challenges. All right, now the next thing I want to discuss is capital investments. Uh, Joe Russo said that there are some capital intensive programs that are wrapping up. Verizon now has more than 50% of its cell sites operating on its own fiber. Okay, so what he's talking about there is the one fiber program. So basically he's saying it's complete. The 5G standalone SA core is fully operational and that's ready to be deploy it if you will uh, get more traffic over it and then with respect to spending uh, they're expecting to land somewhere between 17 billion and 17.5 billion for the year and this quote is important and we had to hear it right you should know that i'm not slowing down what he's referring to is the 5g ultra wideband and he's discussing both c-band and millimeter waves so there are going to be places that verizon continues to build out new millimeter wave nodes and segments of cities and things of that nature and that's going to continue with the bulk of the c-band already being done in the urban setting you can expect to see more of that so i think uh you know mdus multi-dwelling units apartments condos high capacity need areas which already have c-band and might have some millimeter wave are probably going to get some more millimeter wave All right now how much of this build are we going to see well, if you guys remember, prior to C-band, Verizon was spending 17 to $18 billion. So if they continue to stay around this mark, I expect to see an additional 5, 10, 15,000 millimeter wave nodes built again. And they're still going to be building C-RAN. They're still going to be, you know, building small cells. Uh, the one thing mentioned here was the, you know, the one fiber program. I'd like to see that number. You know, it says here 50% of the cell sites. Maybe they make a new goal. Maybe they reinvigorate the One Fiber program. Maybe the next goal is to get an additional 10% over the next couple of years, two, three years. Uh, but I, I don't want to see them bail on the One Fiber program. I think it's been a success for them. 
you cannot properly do this whole 5G thing without access to high capacity fiber circuits. And I think they know that and I think everybody knows that. And I think that will be the distinguishing factor in the future. You know, we could talk about radio upgrades. We can talk about all types of spectrum conversations. But you can't do anything unless you have high capacity fiber circuits. And being the owner and the builder of them puts you at an advantage. When it comes to cost operations, when it comes to access, and, you know, owner's economics. Uh, you know, and in some places, being your owner also means you get to sell it to other folks, right? Verizon's biggest customers nationally are T-Mobile and AT&T, right? And a lot of people don't know that and they don't think about that, but that is indeed true. So Verizon will build their own. Verizon will lease to others. Uh, they'll build for others. I think all is that that's a good part of their business and it's going to help them with their 5G network and also facilitate the growth and success of other 5G builders. So pretty important commentary there gives us some clarity and transparency on what we can expect. Looks like 5G ultra wideband is going to continue to continue to be a big component of what happens in 2024. So they're building a great network. They're going to make lots of capacity, the fixed wireless access, the mobile network growth, cable growth. It's all part of what Verizon is building too. What do you guys think about all this? Sound off in the comment section below. Well, the voice of the people, the SMT Nation, let your voice be heard.